Hey, welcome to my annual Senko Hanabi video, where I fill you in on my progress on these enchanting Japanese fireworks. And boy, let me tell you what a difference a year can make. If you're new to Senko Hanabi, let me fill you in on the basics. And if you're new to this channel, well, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel and joining us on our chem adventures together. These deceptively simple handheld fireworks squirrel away only about a tenth of a gram of black powder in a tightly wound cocoon. When the firework is lit, it will quickly form a pulsing hot dross ball, a complex stew of chemical reactions that throw off the characteristic beautiful branching sparks. What makes Senko Nobi so appealing to me is how it really challenges my preconceptions about fireworks. I have never been more invested in any firework display than a Senko Nobi I am holding. I am a participant, not a spectator in this. Senko Nobi are wonderful. They feel like some kind of artesian small batch secret that you've been let in on. Each fragile Senko Nobi is unique. Each reaction unfolds in its own way with its own story to tell. The true challenge comes from trying to coax out the maximum display out of the most minimum of components. A great Senko Anabi never plays it safe. It lives on the razor's edge, teetering on a pyrotechnic parapet. This intrinsic instability only adds to the intoxicating appeal of these tiny treats. It's been almost 20 years since Senko and Abi first captured my imagination. I was introduced to them in a summer workshop of 2002. A year later, I published my first and only paper in the American Fireworks News, where I chronicled some of my early attempts. Now, I can't say I've made a lot of progress in Senko and Abi over these 20 years. I have an end of year ritual in my chemistry class where we spend a couple days putzing around in the laboratory, uh, each of us trying to make our best Senko and Abi. Uh, and usually if we can just get it to burn, that's a good start. <laughs> Things started to change last spring a little bit. I was inspired by a video by Nighthawk and Light, and uh, based on some of his ideas with tissue paper and making your own charcoal, I felt like I made some progress. I was determined over the summer to take some time to dig in and do some of my own research and really up my game. I contacted one of the last factories making Senko Nabis in Japan, the Tetsui Tokimasa Fireworks Company, and uh, unfortunately they didn't get back to me, but that's probably because I think I filled out the Japanese contact form wrong. I found another lead, a nice Australian researcher named Dr. Barry Sturman was able to give me some advice and, and lend me some articles to read. I was able to get my hand on a couple of research articles by a Belgian researcher named Dr. Frederick Vandersip, and I poured over his meticulous step-by-step -step instructions for making Senko and Abi. It was through that I realized the importance of good Japanese tissue paper, and I immediately went out and ordered some of my own. I chose a light Gampy paper manufactured from the same shrubs that had been used in calligraphy and paper making for a thousand years. The school year started with a truly extraordinary correspondence. None other than Dr. Vandersipt contacted me out of the blue and he had discovered my video on YouTube and he wanted to compliment my research and suggest that I read his articles on it. Now this was a little bit of a surreal fanboy moment. I was using his research to conduct my own research when he contacted me and suggested I read his research. We sow the seed. <laughs> Nature grows the seed. Then we eat the seed. Then we... This was a truly exciting moment to have my work acknowledged by one of my Senko and Abi heroes. And it felt like a really good sign that I was on the right path. And later in the year, it happened again. Ben from Nighthawk and Light reached out to me to let me know that he was dropping a new Senko Anabi video. Um, it turns out that he had been contacted by a Japanese film company who wanted to fly him over to Japan so that he could train at none other than the Tetsui Tokimasa Fireworks Company that I'd mentioned earlier and train with Ryota Tetsui, the proprietor of the company. This was the first time that I saw anybody actually wrap a Senko Anabi. It was super exciting to see Ben uh, get to train with a Japanese master. It was sort of like looking at a more successful version of myself. 
And a month ago, I was able to actually watch the documentary that the Japanese company produced about the Tetsui Tokimasa Fireworks Company. It was wonderful. Watching Ryota work was like taking a masterclass in psychology. So let's take some time to talk about the ingredients of a Senko Nabi. Potassium nitrate, also known as saltpeter, niter, lunacosta. Just like when you blow on a fire to try to get it a little bit more oxygen to keep it going, a chemical oxidizer does the same thing, but it does it much better. Potassium nitrate is almost 50% oxygen by mass. So when it's blended into the gunpowder, it is a ready source of oxygen for the chemical reaction. Just like the oxygen in the air, it's not an explosive itself, but it does help things burn more readily. At its peak, a Senko Anabi can get close to 1000 degrees Celsius. Sulfur. Now there's about three times the amount of sulfur in the black powder for a Senko Anabi than there is in traditional gunpowder. Not only is sulfur involved in the chemical reactions, it's key to creating that characteristic dross ball that throws off the sparks. Consider it sort of the marshmallow in this Rice Krispie treat. Charcoal, this is our carbon fuel. Charcoal is created by burning wood in the absence of oxygen, a process known as pyrolysis. What this does is drive off a lot of the water in the wood and other volatiles that would get in the way. And what you end up with is a wood that burns at a much higher temperature and produces much less smoke. Now there's a lot of different woods that can be used for the charcoal for Senko Anabi. I have settled on a traditional pine wood root as my own source. And so I did a little multitasking during the last family cookout. Delicious. Now charcoal is not the only carbon source used in a Senko Anabi. It's the pine soot itself that is the true secret sauce. Pine soot is known as shown over there, lamp black over here. It is used in inks and polishes. This is an extremely fine particulate found from the incomplete combustion of carbon. Now, as a fine carbon particulate, it's no surprise that this is gonna be a carcinogen, so you have to be really careful around it. Now, I did originally try to make some soot from turpentine, but based on some old industrial research, I decided I would go with combining pine resin and straw and make my own little pellets to burn and try to get the pine soot. And while wildly inefficient, I was able to harvest enough of this black gold to continue my own Senko and Abi research. What is really amazing about the pine soot is how light and fluffy it is. It takes an incredibly large pile of pine soot to even get like a tenth of a gram. Now I would be remiss to not count the paper itself among the ingredients. As stated earlier, a true Senko and Abi requires an Eastern style tissue paper. Now the way Japanese tissue paper is manufactured creates an extremely strong and versatile material, perfect for all kinds of crafts and calligraphy. Now, despite the fact this paper is surprisingly strong, it's, it's very forgiving and it binds very well with itself. A well-wound Senko Anabi will not become unwound and will actually have almost the consistency of a wire. You know, it reminds me a lot of the sticks from lollipops of my youth that I used to unwind. And I was always amazed that you could make such a tough stick out of just a wound up piece of paper. Yeah, I used, to, I used to unwind lollipop sticks back in the 80s. We had a lot of time back then. Okay, disclaimer time. You should not be playing with fireworks. <laughs> Some of my strongest memories of visiting one of America's last operating fireworks companies was how many people were walking around missing digits. You really have to be respectful of any chemical that you experiment with, and fireworks doubly so. So based on a lot of different sources, a little less than 30 centimeters long, about four centimeters wide and tapered, seems to be a really nice place to start. You need enough tissue paper to hold the black powder, but you don't want so much tissue paper that it gums up the reaction. Now the black powder itself is a source of endless exploration in its own right. In a tip of the hat to Dr. Vandersip, I actually like to use different compositions within the same Sanko Anabi. Now it might just be psychosomatic and I, and I, 
and I almost said psychosomatic there, but I really do feel like it gives me a little bit more control over the story arc of the reaction. Now, there are lots of different recipes for black powder, but most of them settle around 55% potassium nitrate, about 30% sulfur, and about 15% charcoal, or some mix of charcoal and soot. A really good proportion of charcoal to soot tends to be about four to one, but I've seen people use pure pine soot in their Chisenko and Abis. Now, people really into pyrotechnics have better ways of grinding their components, but I, I tend to rely on just the good old mortar and pestle. And most of the research acknowledges the different types of reactions you're going to get depending on the way that you actually grind up the materials. I actually try grinding each component separately into powder before I add the next part. This really breaks up the grains, increases the surface area, and allows you to get a nice tight pack of materials in there. It's not uncommon for me to spend 15 or 20 minutes over the process of grinding just a couple grams of the black powder. Now, big, big disclaimer time. Normally, you would not grind an oxidizer and a fuel together because you could start an accidental ignition. But anecdotally, that doesn't seem to be the case with Senko and Abi black powder. Again, the research is full of references to creating the powder this way. I personally have never gotten an accidental ignition of black powder, nor have any of my students by grinding it in the mortar and pestle. But again, past performance does not predict future behavior. And so you'd be better off showing a lot of caution with this black powder. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. And finally comes the all important wrap itself. Now they say you have to wrap a thousand Senko and Abis to become good at it. And that means I still have a lot of work to do. When you start wrapping a Senko and Abi, you have to give it your full attention and you are responding to what's happening in between your fingers and adjusting to try to get the wrap just right. You're not twisting the paper per se, you're just wrapping it extremely tightly. And it's hard to explain that without actually doing it. Throughout the entire process of creating a Senko Nabi, there needs to be a constant pulling and stretching of the tissue paper to really push it to its limits to get the true ideal Senko Nabi. There's been decades of fascinating research into what happens in a Senko and Abi. Black powder itself doesn't detonate. It's actually considered a low explosive. It burns rapidly in a process called deflagration. When that gunpowder burns in a Senko and Abi, it creates a dross ball at the bottom. And inside that dross ball, you get all sorts of reactions and byproducts of reactions cascading into secondary and tertiary reactions. As that dross ball continues to heat up initially from the potassium nitrate and then from reactions with oxygens at its surface, it creates gases that will blow off the droplets to create the sparks that we all know and love. Now, a Senko and Abi moves through several predictable stages. At the beginning, you have what's called the blossom bud. That's the dross ball. Then you move into the tree peonies phase, and that's where you get the sporadic, long branching sparks. You then move into the third stage called the pine needle stage, and that's where you get the rapid explosive sparking close to the dross ball. Now, as the Senko Nabi approaches the end of its existence, you enter stage four of the falling chrysanthemum phase, where you get the long, peaceful, singular sparks. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to join me on this Senko Anabi journey. Listen, if you found anything in this video helpful, uh, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Like Senko Anabis themselves, this channel has been going through some stages and I feel like we're about to enter a new stage and I've got some pretty exciting videos planned for the future. And listen, I would be super remiss not to thank once again a lot of the people that helped me. I want to thank Ken and Bonnie Kosanke who ran that initial workshop where I was introduced to Senko and Abi, Dr. Barry Sturman who helped me in the early days of my research last summer, Dr. Vandersip for his excellent papers and reaching out and encouraging me to continue, Ben from Nighthawk and Light who is from a channel orders of magnitude larger than my own, who took the time to share the joys of Senko Nabi with another enthusiast. And of course, Ryota Tetsui, who continues to be an excellent steward of the ancient and wonderful craft of Senko Nabi. Thanks for watching and have a great day.